need to order. Put out on a zero month. And first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. We have an addition to the agenda. We'll just put at the put after the FEMA updates, which is a special event permit for American Crafted Spirits Inc. So we'll put that in there after the FEMA update piece. Can you say the name? Um, special event permit for American Crafted Spirits Inc. American Crafted Spirits Inc. Which is through Baby's Fire. We're doing it at Baby's Fire. We're doing it through Vietnam. Oh, okay. All right. Anything else? I move to accept the agenda as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And public comment inquiries or anything that's not on the agenda for this evening that anybody would like to comment or bring up? How's your time? Everybody's here for the agenda item? <laughs> Doug, you don't have anything? Not yet. No? <laughs> <laughs> we gave you two weeks. Come up with something. Need more time. <laughs> All right, so we'll move on. Move on. Our one appointment this evening is for the rec committee. So that's our 6.15 appointment. Is everybody that's going to be here here, or do you want to wait until 6.15? I'm, I'm ready whenever. I don't know if anybody else is going to be here. I'm not sure. Shane said he was going to try to come. Dietrich will not be here. Okay. Do you want to wait 10 minutes and see? Yeah, I'll Because we can motor through the other two, and we can swing back. All right. <clears throat> That'll bring us to the central... Vermont Council on Aging to discuss a motion to authorize payment of $650. So that's outlined in your packet that um, they had submitted their letter um, to the town and uh, via email and they received a confirmation, a read receipt, which is in your packet. So um, they believed that, uh, that their letter was received. They got a read receipt, makes sense. They assumed it got taken care of. Um, then the service committee, and Paul can tell me if I'm wrong, service committee and Kelly issued a letter, you know, which they do reminders to people if they haven't received their information. And I spoke to the lady, Mary, and she said, Therese, she said, I don't recall seeing the letter. Doesn't mean it didn't come, could have gone to someone else. And she said, the other thing is, even if we'd gotten the letter, I'm not sure I would have done anything about it because I received this read receipt. I received a confirmation from the town of Bethel that they got it. So she said, I'm not even sure, you know, with everything that we even would have pursued it. So she obviously, as she and her executive director wrote you a very nice letter. Um, so they're asking that that we would that the select board would still authorize, you know, give them the six hundred and fifty dollars and um, you know, they're obviously a nonprofit and use it and have Bethel residents and I so she sent a very nice letter and if you choose to do that, we'll just, you know, Figured out, I'll take it out of the budget and somewhere else to pay him. And, um, but that's something Paul knows more about the process because he's yeah. Just that. briefly, let me. We send out letters to. There's, there's the usual group that we um, receive requests from every year. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty standard group that's been on the on the list for quite a while. Um, and if we don't receive the material, and I've got, I can give you copies of the letter that we sent out. Okay, because we have a couple here that yeah. Kelly, I don't know if that was. What so we if we about. don't hear from them by probably the beginning of the third week of November, um, then we send out a reminder letter. You know, we need to have your material by the first of December because we meet the first week of December to discuss the, the appropriations. So that last, this is last year we're talking about. We're not mm -hmm. talking about right. things going on now. We're talking right. about last year. Mm -hmm. There were three that didn't submit any information. One of them was Capstone. They sent a letter saying they were not going to have a request that year because they were reorganizing and weren't, they weren't going to submit a request. American Red Cross and the, um, the World, uh, the Aging um, Council on Aging 
also didn't send the material. So we sent letters to them. Kelly sent out letters, reminder letters, and we still didn't hear anything back from them in time. So we went through the process with the committee and reviewed just like we always do. And uh, since they hadn't, uh, we hadn't received any of the material, and when the material comes in, it's put in a binder right away. It's a binder that Kelly has at the desk that everything goes right in there. She and I look at that on a regular basis, see who's there and who's not there and whatnot. So um, for whatever reason, that material didn't get to the committee. <clears throat> the only thing that we, we want to make sure in the future is that I noticed that they had sent it to the town clerk. Yeah. And the letter, in the letter, they're asked to send it to the town office via email or snail mail or um, fax. Um, so maybe somehow in, in that transition, it got shuffled and, yeah. and never got to the committee. So. It's a changeover between clerks, right? Well, Jean yeah. Byrne was the one who, who, who received it, according to the read. I wasn't sure she was still there. I don't know that. Because they, they, have, the same, they have the same email address. So I think it might have been yeah. a transitional, either or someone was new, or because I, that's a new, that she yeah. just took on that email address. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what to I'm tell you. I'm not sure, but for whatever reason, it didn't come in. Come yeah. Through. So it didn't get into the appropriation, so it didn't get voted on by the town <clears throat> at town meeting. Did we apply for this year? Yes. Yeah. So this is not this. It was the last year. Year. It's now. in our current budget that we yes. voted so on at town meeting. 2018, uh, actually. Um, Final Yeah. Do you know, just from doing this for so long, they obviously have residents, special residents, and because you guys wouldn't give them money if they didn't uh, sit. No, we, we probably would have put it right through, you yeah. know, as a level funded item because they do, the letter that she wrote explains yeah. the service that they do to the Bethel residents. Yeah. I think it's just a procedural thing yeah, that exactly. we're talking about here. It's not so much a, well, I'm 650 that. bucks is not, not going to yeah. do anything. And I think too on our end, it's obviously something internal here and then, you know, she admitted that they probably wouldn't have thought twice yeah. about it. So definitely something on so our end too. It's just, you know, procedure it is, those, I know, it's uh, tough to do. Yeah, who knows? I understand. Um, so what I, what I would want to do is abstain from voting or recusing myself from the voting part if, if there is a decision to be made here. Because I think I'm too close to the to the other process uh -huh. and I feel like it might be a little bit of a conflict. I think though, it's, um, you, I think it's too late because you've discussed it. You could vote against it. You know, I think well, that I'm not sure that you can abstain now that we all I can abstain. Make a conversation. Maybe I'll be <laughs> right, maybe that's it. Yeah. Or something like that. Well, yeah. yeah. But I get what you're saying, Paul. Yeah. And you're right. It's procedural. You don't want to set yeah. a precedent. I yeah. understand what you're saying. And um, that's why it's here, because I was going to check for it for that one. I was like, no, no, that can go to the board. So they, yeah. they really are asking for it within this budget. This is mm -hmm. it's not about the budget we're going to vote on. No. Okay. Right, it just, it just wasn't approved as part of the, the appropriation of the time meeting. Not that part, but that's all. Okay. That's the only difference. Any ideas or comments? Yeah, it's, such a, it's such an odd one because, yeah, there is a yeah. whole process through which they should go through and be finding out about it now well beyond that process yeah. feels a little odd. Yeah. Well, I think they wouldn't have paid it known because we don't normally pay appropriations until further into the year because I don't issue, um, tend to issue appropriations until we've received a couple of, you know, some tax money because we're not going to lend out what we don't have. So they don't think they really realize until later in the year, um, partway through the year, that they can take it in. And I think this is one of those situations where we have as much to blame blame on, you know, in our, on, the, on the office side, that somebody obviously dropped the ball. They didn't know what they were reading or meant to send it to right, someone. Just did. Got so yeah, so it's tough. I hate to penalize an organization that <laughs> benefits the residents. Um, well, sometimes too, it seems like we get letters from some of the agencies and it's, 
more we question whether it's an invoice or whether it's a request for the next year. Right. So we probably need to clean up that procedure. Yeah, a little bit better. I agree. Okay. Um, and I guess my question would really be for you, Teresa. Like, do you feel like we have six hundred and fifty we can free up in the budget? You know, I'm sure we can take it out of something that we'll just we'll we'll overspend the line and we'll underspend something else. I mean, that's really it. I'll just look for someplace else that we can cut it out of. That's always the goal anyways, is to understand, so. <clears throat> Theoretically, it wasn't voted on, so how can we give it to them? Well, it's any sort of invoice. You still have the authority to, to um, you know, manage the bills and the money of the town, so. Is there an option to Hold off on making a decision to see where our own budget, like if we're going to be running a deficit. Which well, we're not yeah, but I mean, we wouldn't know until, you know, probably April or so. Mm -hmm. And I know we're getting a lot of um, break, we had a lot of breakdowns in the last week or so at the town garage. But, um, so I mean, we could wait, sure, that could be something that you want to go on. That's up to you guys. I mean, I know it's well within our power of the select board to grant this, mm -hmm. but I also always like to stick to the formality of the things, which is, you know, this is a piece that is voted on by the town voters on town meeting day. So, mm -hmm. by us going ahead and, you know, even though this might be the right thing to do, it could end up setting a precedence that, yeah. you know, at any time the board could just spend away on whatever they want to do with the voters. I mean, I guess my recommendation would be <clears throat> to not grant the 650 in this current budget year, but you know, there could be the option of having someone on town meeting day this year ask for maybe double duty to get put in well, the already coming budget. Yeah, they're already that could kind of offset that. That's true. If somebody comes to the town meeting day, it could be voted on and plenty of stage Yeah, sure. Exactly. Anyone could stand up. Anyone, anyone of you could stand up as residents and say, this is what happened. You want to double. Or you could ask someone not, you know, to do it. So. Yeah, I think I feel better going that route. I don't want to undercut them, especially if they're benefiting our own residents. But right. it is it is sort of a tricky line of precedent. It is, and I feel bad because if it was a mistake that was made, you know, that that the office had a hand in, then right. why to punish them for something else is difficult. I also get that too, but I, that's certainly a, a really easy way to take care of it, is to just have someone stand up at town meeting and then they would have to wait, but they would get it in the end. So right, they'd get it, it would be a year late, you know, if it goes through that way. Yeah, that's yeah. Do that. I can go either way. I mean, <clears throat> if it was in there, I'm sure it would have passed. Oh, I'm sure. Even though they, even though they didn't actually vote on it, I'm, I feel confident that they would have voted in favor of it if that money had been there. Uh, again, we're talking about $650. I don't know if that's going to make or break them. So. I think they're like us. They probably run on a, you know, school yeah. budget. I don't know. I don't they're know. not a problem. I'm sure they don't have okay. money. Some money to yeah. draw from. Yeah. But. So you could kind of throw it back to the voters. Is there anybody that would like to move forward with the motion to to go ahead with the 650 now, or or, or wait until town meeting day? Okay. So here, no motion. We'll at this point we won't grant a request for it, other than okay. Um, Instruction to maybe send either we could have a representation. Okay, I can let her at the that. meeting, or they could be at the meeting and. And stand up, and yeah. we can discuss why why it may or may not have gotten put in there, and okay, and this sure. would be a way of going forward and we tracking should. it, I guess. I think we should send them a letter. Though, I'll send them to her. So, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I'll call. I'll show sure. Mary to come reach out to me tomorrow. I'll reach out to her. But I'll let her know. And I think that's the best. I mean, not to say that I'm sure the voters would have voted it in, but you know, at some point, I mean, who'd say that if you started doing that, the select board could just start. Don't want money to different groups of people, you know. So mm -hmm. I think that's good. Any further discussion on that? Okay. You guys all set now, Ellie? Yeah. Okay.
Thank you for having us tonight. Um, I want to start off um, by reminding the select board of the March 7, 2017 town meeting. In the minutes, I want to remind the select board that um, Corey Stearns explained um, that the committee had made a five-year plan for improvements and that the first stage was the new pool house and then the second stage was the building of a skateboard park with um, that costing 81000 and um, and he went over the proposed plan and the voters voted yes, 145 to 26 on that. And so I know that in the last couple years, um, it, we have been working with you because of your concerns about the cost of the skateboard park and everything, and and in a more feasible line of more um, of, of, um, 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 toned down a little bit, which we have been doing and getting it moved um, before the DRB and getting it size size of a re reasonable size. A size. Um, and so as of um, the new year 2020, we have uh, gotten two proposals from the contractor, Michael Parker. Um, and the first one was building a park for 55,000 and asking the town for help with materials, um, equipment, and in-kind work. Um, and when, um, and Therese nicely came to our um, committee meeting at the 1st of January and, and then looked it over and said what we had in equipment or what we could do in, in kind and then that um, a lot of the um, items that Mr. Parker needed um, um, we didn't have or couldn't do. So um, I requested Mr. Parker to um, set give us another proposal, which he did, and you have that proposal, I believe, in your packet for $75,000. Um, um, lastly, um, I have been working in the fall um, um, to work on the Tarrant Foundation. We did, um, the Tarrant Foundation came in October and did a site visit. And though we, we couldn't, um, we couldn't um, um, make their deadline of the 1st of November to so have all the information to really apply, um, they said we could um, do their next cycle. And that cycle is um, coming up in March. And so last week, um, I worked on doing all the paperwork and um, getting what, um, because Rebecca Stone is working with me, and getting all the facts and figures for that. Also last week, I um, met with um, Owen of, um, of um, the Bay's Bar. Um, he's really on board with helping us. He wants to help us fundraise to do the whole master plan, so he's He's on board to even helping us, not through this year, but an additional um, um, thing. He, uh, we have through those, um, those um, um, things that we have started planning. Um, also, also, I um, talked personally to, to Mr. Parker last Friday morning, and um, and. Um, and I got, so our proposal is that he has put his $75,000, um, I got his timeline um, that he will start at the end of June and be finished by the mid of September. Um, the funds that we have raised through um, our voters voting and um, the um, concert dinner and a little back grant and things like that. It comes to 50288 um, So our balance is 17712 to be uh, able to do the project for $75,000. Um, 
And, um, and these are the, we're, do, we're going to be doing a raffle through the spring and summer to, um, 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 to um, have a drawing at Ford Festival. We have a concert dance um, scheduled for April 24. Bo Fair is a, um, a very popular, um, 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 whatever, magicians, and they have agreed to do it. We've already contacted them, and they're on board to help us with this fundraiser on the 24th. We would like to ask to do a coin drop on July 11th. And, um, and I put together um, um, what um, Rebecca said that we needed for, um, for our proposed budget. I put it together. She has looked at it and said it is good. So we have all the things ready, almost ready, to, um, to go before Turan, who are, that are meeting in March, and Rebecca says um, we're in good shape for, to do that for the Turan Foundation. Is this how much you're asking for from the Tarrant Foundation? Is this the, um, uh, you're asking for? Uh, the, the difference is the 17,000. So that's what you're asking the Tarrant Foundation for? Well, we're not, we're not sure. Okay, you don't um, okay. We don't, we're not sure yet, but it depends on um, if you agree to go, let us go forward with the $75,000. All right, I was, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so, at least from my work with the Tarrant Institute, they, they, they'll tell you what they're going to give you, not so oh, much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's more yeah like, they tell us. They tell us what you want, and then we'll tell you what we'll give you. Oh, sorry. Okay. And then you that's have to nice. come up with matching funds. Sure. So, oh, that's nice, though. So okay. you okay. have to do fundraisers, and we want, and we're we're in a position where we want to show them we're doing fundraising. So now I know that Shane has some ideas. Um, so um, um, I'm going to let him. Um, so about a year ago, you know, we were still very hopeful that we would have additional funds, and calendar year has gone by now, and. So far today, we haven't seen any significant uh, change in the funding. Um, we didn't want the project to be held up and lose another build season with this contractor. Um, so whatever we need to do to lock in with him for this summer is, is what I think we should be doing. Um, you know, we've got a, a pretty good park design for about 75K. Um, that's going to be pretty awesome. If we had to pare it back, a little bit so that we can still build it for the 55 that we have. That's a third bid that Mike is working on right now. Um, so that it would, I'll show you some picks. It would peel off a few of the features on one of the sides. I gave them, too, just so you know, I they didn't give them the original, you know. Okay, so okay, they, yeah. yeah, so they know what But it requires, it requires a little explanation. No, I just wanted so, to know. So, in the top picture, Imagine that the front edge is flat. So you'll have a mini, a jump box, and a quarter, but this other front piece would be flat and would have maybe slabs and ledges and benches and grind stuff. If that makes sense to you guys. Um, I don't have a sense from my area yet if that's going to be enough to drop the, you know, the 20K or so that we're short. Uh, to, to do that. Um, what it does do though is in, instead of originally we, we pitched a phase one build with this footprint with a, a 80 by 100 and then a phase two build which was roughly 40 by 100. Um, those two phases together are in the left column showing the features and benefits. On the right column if we pared down the design, we would have some flat skate tr uh, um, terrain along with some ramp terrain. So we've got almost all of the same features that we would have had in the giant park 
uh, kind of crammed into a smaller footprint. So as far as ability level and versi um, versatility and diversity of terrain, we're getting most of what we would have had with the two phases of build in a reduced financial footprint and the, the same phase one footprint. So to, to me, if we, if we need to pitch a reduced scale, uh, we can do that just, just if only for the sake of locking into Michael's calendar for the summer. And if it seems reasonable that, you know, would you guys hold us back if we raise more funds before we break ground and tell us we couldn't build the rest of phase one as we originally intended? Or would you say, yeah, you know, go for it. Build the original phase one. So if we if we get if we get approval for a pared down version, we we know we can build that this summer. If we get approval for this and know that we have the ability to build more if we get more funding before we break ground, that seems like a reasonable caveat to throw onto, you know, onto this. The the goal being let's not lose another build season. Um, hoping we get funds. It'd be fantastic to get funds. Yeah. But to me, I think we can be grateful for what we have and enjoy what we have and not have it hold up the, the progress yet again. If you need just out of curiosity, so if you did the $55,000 bill now and say the money didn't come in right away, is that something that just, I don't know, another year? Or so could you add more to that the, one? The intent was for this to be scalable. Okay. The goal was to have Phase one be kind of randy, tricky to build stuff. Yep. And then phase two to be the flatter uh, terrain stuff. But there's nothing saying that a second phase couldn't be a mix of both again. Right. Like if you took like a hundred foot strip of the skate park, you could move the, the jump box section anywhere you needed to. Yep. You could move the next thing with the spine and the minis anywhere you needed to. And you could move the skate plaza in eight foot or 12 foot chunks anywhere you need to do. So we can, we can add layers to this to build up to the 5,000 square feet that we're allowed, uh, allowed to build. Um, funding, uh, funding permitted. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, and my opinion is different because I really feel that we should go for the 75,000. I have been in contact with um, um, Mr. Parker today. He, we have, we have, we got in 2016 um, a lot of different proposals from him so that he could make the Tony Hawk, right? That Corey could, could apply for the Tony Hawk. Mr. Parker, on his own time, did those proposals. We never paid for them. We never acknowledged, really, you know, thanked him for it. I, I think maybe we thanked him. So basically, we um, diverted, and I'm not sure why we diverted, but we paid $3,000 to Spawn Ranch to give us a design that was not feasible and that did not meet our needs. So for us to be keeping asking Mr. Parker to keep coming up with different proposals. He is um, not being paid for his time for all these different proposals. And that is why I think that we should accept the 75,000 one and, and go for that. So the current income that we have on here, the 60,000, trees, is that what? Yeah, we have yeah, 57 to 88, 32. Yeah. Does that include the money that got spent on the design? And yeah, it's, in, it's yeah. on and on expenses. Yeah. Yeah, the bond is only $3,000. Yeah. So. Well, Teresa, you were talking in your correspondence with Ellie about the in kind part of it from the town. Yes, yeah, so the first proposal. What's the impact of that? Well, not much, apparently, because the first proposal was um, <clears throat> that we received. Mr. Parker obviously didn't know which no fault of his. He didn't know what we had for equipment, so he was looking for a track skin steer and things that we didn't have to, to we don't own them, so we can't use them. 
So um, I wrote an email back to the committee and Shane just said, look, we, we don't own tracks. This is what we have and this is, you know, willing to help. So we were going to take care of the swale and the ditching and I spoke to Alan and said, you know, can you do the excavating of the 24 by 80 and, um, you know, at least to get the initial that taken care of. And they said, and Alan said yes, because I talked to him about the project and what we could do. And he said yes. And Mr. Parker knocked a thousand dollars off his price if the town did that piece. But some of the work was we just, you know, we we don't own, own the equipment he needed. So the in kind part was, you know, we, we said we would do what we could do. Obviously, the swale, the ditching, and then maybe in the original excavation. But. Um, <coughs> There, there we can't give them. We don't own. <laughs> so. We can find donations for raw materials like stone, the crushed ledge, and yeah. some other fill. That that will definitely help us a lot. You know, I, I think he said the stone came in at like nine k. Yeah. So if we could, you know, talk to the quarry and we could donate some small uh, few trucks of stone, you know, that'll put us in a really good place within spitting distance of the of the goal. Um, but assuming yeah. for a moment we don't have access to any resources as it kind of looks today, mm -hmm. you know, what, what do we want to do to move forward this year? So I think that obviously, I'm not sure what was the, I mean, it was my understanding from what I heard was that we were going to do some trucking and that sort of thing, move fill, I don't know what else the in kind was supposed to be, just some labor and um, <coughs> we weren't, I was told we weren't giving them materials and um, so obviously I said no to that and then um, the equipment, yeah, you know, we just didn't have it, and so I said we couldn't rent yeah. it because that wouldn't be in kind either. Yeah. So. Yeah. so originally you said twenty thousand in kind, but it's not working out that way. All right, exactly. Well, Mr. Parker is concerned enough about that water situation. That He's suggesting that we put in a catch basin and hook it up to the. Yeah, no. We're, I'm going to meet with um, Tim and Alan on site over there. We have had some issue off there, but also part of the water project is we're going to come down with the electric. And it's my understanding that there is quite a, there was used to be a dish that's gotten filled in over time that would help, that used to divert that water before it hit the park. Because we want it gone because we're going to be moving the, the um, relocating the swing set and doing some stuff over there ourselves. So we also want to do it. So I'm going to take a peek at that and we'll see what we can do. We, we will manage that, but I'm not going to put in a $7,000 catch basin either. I can't deal with that this year. So um, I don't have the money set aside for it. So it, it's unfortunate that the in kind, just like Ellie said, is just not working out. But I, you know. I know we've discussed it before, but just for clarity's sake, can we review? So the rec department has a certain amount of money in their capital, right. in their capital uh, yeah. budget for their whole master plan. Yes. A certain amount of that is allotted to the skate park. Exactly. The 57 yeah. seven that we've been talking about. Um, the remainder of that money is the responsibility of the rec departments. It's not the board's. No, it's the opposite. Decide. It's no, the, okay. It's your responsibility to try to remember all of it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so we have the authority to say yes, you can, or no, you can't. Absolutely. Yeah. The use additional funds towards this. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you're the yeah. only ones who can. I can't spend capital fund. Only you can. And the rec committee is is just like every other committee. They're an advisory committee to the board. And so hypothetically, let's say we approve the idea of the seventy-five thousand dollar version today, but they're not able to approve the funds. At some point, they may come back and say, okay, here's how much we got, but we need to fill this gap up. Because he needs to get paid regardless. Right. Right. And that's our yes. Yep. Okay. What kind of soil is that there? Is that gravel clay? They need a, a base layer of like twelve inches of stone. So no, no, I'm talking about the soil that's there right now. Is that clay? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Well, uh -huh. if he if he gets clay, he's going to have to do a lot more on his slate work to set your thing there because. You can't build on top of clay because next, after another winter, it'll be all cocked up. Oh, you mean the ground there? Yeah, the ground itself. Um, I don't think it's clay because the swing set uh, has been, you know, it's, and I, um, Carol Ketchum and I went down with uh, a certain pole thing to just see how far about the swing sets, and we didn't come, we didn't get any clay when we were doing that. 
And why does why does the water sink there? Um, it's it's because of the runoff. Yeah, but the, if it's not clay, it, it'll it soak into the soil. Um, but the water standing uh, usually is clay. Um, well. Um, I can't see putting 75,000 into concrete and have it all spewed up in another winter. That's part of the, the that's, uh, I've been in construction long enough and, and the flip doesn't get you out of play. Um, well, I, I guess I'm wrong on that, but well, I guess that. My other point is I would like to see a performance bond on this too. A what? Performance bond. Performance bond. I think he stated something about that in his. Um, yeah, he did. He said yeah, he wasn't going to include a performance. Right, bond. yeah. He said the amount of the bond would be added to the contract. Okay. How, how does that work? Because it's so Depends much. Depends on for, the company. Yeah. yeah, so I wonder how much it was going to Smaller add. companies, more money. Yeah. So he, he is asking for like three stages of payment. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he gets all the cash. <clears throat> Yeah, and I have no idea what the. What about you, Doug? You ever dug anything over there in the rec area? No, not that. Not as deep as what they need to go check for clay. Or you have to go down at least. Well, it depends on the area that you're at. You have to. Some areas we have to go down like at the gravel pit. We hit it at ten feet. Yeah. So you've never dug over there. No. no I, and I, I haven't. I was, and I haven't. So I don't know either. I. I, I don't know. Well, one would think that if you start the project that you'd exploratory dig over there to see what there is, and yeah. if you do run into something major, then you'd halt construction activities. Yeah. Well, if, this, if the road crew is going to do the original digging, I could have them do that. Also, they're going to be digging out the swing set, so they would be digging in the soil there, so I can ask them to dig um, test holes. a test hole. Yeah. I can ask the road crew to dig a test hole. So I, I guess, you know, my position on it hasn't changed since the beginning and, you know, build it or don't build it, you know, I'm just here to manage the financial end of things. The recreation committee partnered with the voters are the ones that decided the plan over there. Um, but we've continued to have this, you know, a budget that we think we're going to get to with a design and then the budget falls through because of Tony Hawk money or other money we thought coming in. And we've been doing this for four years now of, you know, last time we were here in May, it was pretty much, you know, we need to either move forward or put it on the shelf. Um, and it almost seems to me, again, we're coming back forward with, let's, you know, we only have 58000 but we want to do the $75,000 of the work in hopes that we're going to get some fundraising, you know. So I guess the way I see it is, you know, we either build what we have in the funds, or we don't build it at all. Uh, if we want to build what we have in the funds, then there's an, an opportunity to do more in the future with other voter money that's appropriated, then that's fine. But, you know, I, I would um, right now stand behind adding any extra money to it, unless it was gone through the voters with it. That's my opinion. The one in your packet is the seventy-five thousand. I don't remember if we got the fifty-five thousand after. I don't remember which one came first, but there is, as, as Jane refers to, there's a fifty-five thousand dollar version. Um, just I gave it the seventy-five because that was the most recent one we had. Right. So um, my concern is that with the fifty-five thousand, we don't have the equipment to do that. Right. The fifty-five thousand was if they. Um, was if the town was going to do, you know, all that in kind work that they asked for, but we don't own a track skid steer or so. So there was things we can't do because we don't own it, and the select board, no, that's not in kind. So it's not really a fair So I don't know. I don't think we're talking about his first bid anymore. Oh, okay, she thank you. We're talking about a third bid. The one he's working with. Where he yeah. but he he's, he's not outside. working on it right now, okay? He wants to go with the two proposals. He's not working with them. I talked to him today. I got an email and I forwarded it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Nice. yeah. I talked to him. So, 
Okay, so apparently we got the 55, we can't do, unfortunately, the town doesn't own that. We can't give the 20,000 in kind because we couldn't give it in the way that he needed because we don't own it. So then he came back with this new proposal, which was, okay, if I'm gonna do everything, it's 75,000. Then when I spoke to Alan, went through it and asked him, he could do, it got dropped to 74,000. But it sounds like, from what Shane's saying, if you don't approve the 75, there's a possibility that they could still have something built, just as he's saying, scaled down with that money and then able to, as he's saying, if during construction they do come up with this money before he starts in June, then, um, you know, so then- Something we, built for how much? 55. 55. For 55 that we could add on to down the road. Or even maybe as, or even, or even during the time of the Yeah, yeah. 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 So she walks in with 20 yeah. grand. No donation or whatever. Yeah, so the only, yeah, so it's, and if we can't start till June, we would fence off that construction area so people coming to use the pool and everything would still be able to have access to the pool, the swings, and all that good stuff. They, we would just, we would just um, yeah. fence him off. We're talking about fence off. somewhere in between a stripped down phase one and a complete phase one. We'd be building two thirds or three quarters of the bells and whistles, and then some simpler stuff on. The, the eight feet by 100 feet side. And if we have additional funds, then we finish to the phase one we intended in the first place. The intent is to get on this calendar, build it this summer. Jason? Chris, uh, can you Yep. Um, what is the performance budget? Is that because I couldn't really hear? Bond. Bond, what is that? Uh, it would, in that case, usually it's like a, uh, it's a, workmanship guarantee so that might usually they're typically a year so basically it's saying that they're taking out insurance so that if they build it and within a year there's some kind of workmanship issue with with the skate park um, then the insurance would cover it to to fix it or, or whatnot where where it is right now there would be nothing so it's kind of kind of an as is built so once it's built then you know you take ownership of it on the last day that's built, and then if something happens the next spring or next, you know, summer with it, then, then you know, just stuck with what what it is. Um. <clears throat> I, I'm fine with moving forward with what we have in the budget, and if you can fundraise extra whatever between now and when you're building over there, then you can make it a little, you know, you can get a little closer to that goal we have there. Uh, but I would say, you know, I mean, again, I guess, you know, and everybody has their own opinion on this board, but my opinion is that these committees are put together for a reason, and that's really to, uh, in this case, you know, you're tasked with the master plan of the recreation area, and the skate park <coughs> is one piece of that master plan. And it may have been labeled, you know, plan two of the whole master plan, but you guys are in charge of managing that plan. We're in charge of making sure that the money that allotted to the plan is being done correctly and it's not being over budgeted or um, anything like that. Uh, but at the same time, we want to see something move forward. So that's either, you know, like we talked about in May, that's either let's move forward with what we have in the budget if it makes sense. And if you can fundraise more, then that's fine. Or let's put it on the shelf and let's move the next thing, though, if that's whatever, tennis court, basketball court, whatever's on that, let's move that forward because there is money in the fund to do more, you know? And it just seems like we've gotten to the skate park and everything has come to a halt over there. You know, I know we did the trails, but, you know, there's, there's something else that could be getting done there. Um, that's my opinion. Anybody? Yes? Um, so, I'm not super involved in this. I'm just going to get a little bit, you know, because uh, like you said, it's been going on a long time, really long time, so I'd like to see something happen as well. But I'm just wondering, um, when you said that there might be, I might be hearing this wrong, but additional funds someplace or something else, don't we have an improvement fund in the town? Like, could we, could any of that be used? Or, like, if something comes up, like, like you know, this was a really good point about the clay, you know, so maybe you wanted to take a, for example, with that, or that, or that um, the performance bond if that's going to cost money or just to close a gap or something. Is any additional money like in our town's budget, like in an improvement fund available for this type of thing? No. We have different
different funds in town, but um, they're either like capital improvement funds, which go for like <clears throat> buildings, um, or you know, oh, highway infrastructure fund. Um, we wouldn't have anything else over there other than you know the the rec committee fund. So you know, yeah, the balance so right now there's you know what we're talking there's fifty seven thousand dollars of change in that fund that's just for the skate park. But the total fund balance might be double that. Hundred and one. You know, so there's, you know, there's another forty-five to fifty thousand dollars that's sitting in the recreation fund that gets appropriated each year. That's supposed to be going towards the other right. items on that, okay. or any other park maintenance. Like we need yeah. to replace the pool. We had to replace the pool pump, <clears throat> and that was like less than five thousand. We did. But and the challenge with this has been, you know. There's been a certain amount of money that's been appropriated to the taxpayers, which which is around fifty thousand dollars. And then there's different forms of some grants, um, some in-kind donations and fundraisers and things like that that add to that money. Um, so that and this park has gone from, you know, at one point I think the original one, at least it was on the board, it was around eighty thousand. And then at one point we had to kind of say, whoa, wait a minute, we're getting too big here because remember there was some potentials of some big grants and we had to kind of say. You know, even if Tony Hawk himself walked in here and gave us a million dollars, that we're only going to build a certain size, of, you know. So we've been like, we've been from like here to here, and now we're kind of back to here again. So, um, but I think everybody wants to see something move forward. Yes. Yeah. Um, we also want to build something that is going to be usable. I mean, we don't want to just spend fifty thousand dollars if nobody's going to use it because you know, it doesn't work. Um, but at this point, I think you know we need to either. You know, move forward or shelf it and move another piece of the, you know, the rec plan forward. Um, yes? I got two questions. Uh, what about liability and why did Randolph get rid of their skate park? So I don't know why Randolph got rid of theirs, Joe. Liability is covered through VLCT. We have insurance for that, and there's definitely signage that goes there about skating at their own risk. But if somebody falls and breaks their arm, we're not going to be liable for it. Um, and I don't know why Randolph got rid of theirs. I, I don't know. I didn't know they had one. They had just a, well, uh, some jumps, but I don't know. But it wasn't a real estate one. It was. Oh, it was. Oh, it was steel. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. No idea on the Randolph piece, Joe. Yeah. But. I'm going to check on that because I think somebody got hurt and they lost. And I know liability-wise, would be covered under the umbrella. Yeah, we have a huge state park in the town I came from, and, and we were by that. We work with the insurance company too to make sure that the proper signage, because they're the one who's going to be defending us right. if something happens. So we always work with them and we do that pool all the rec sites to make sure that we've crossed all of our T's and dotted our I's. So if somebody, if a kid breaks his arm, you got coverage? Mm. We're not going to pay for it. He, our, we won't get, insurance company won't cover it because it's one of those that they're accepting their own liability by being there. What I was saying is we work with our insurance company to make sure that that is the case by making sure we have all the proper signage and everything. He actually comes, Wade and Stewart comes, and, and will tell us exactly what we need to post there so that they can deny the claim. It's no different than the pool. Right, it's like the pool. Anything else. Yep. Yep, exactly. And yeah, as far as Randall 5, yeah. So what's the board feel this time? I think it makes sense to spend within the budget that it exists right now. Um, because I mean, a project of the size is going to have problems. There are going to be additional items that, that pop up. Because yeah. there doesn't seem to be any contingency in here. So you're right. Yeah, if they fund more money. Fund, it so if something does happen and you need to grab some more money to deal with whatever issue is, then we've still got some funds and we're not in you know, a keep a hold. As if we wanted to be 75 and, and hope that we would come up with the balance of the of the uh, funding. Well, that's, that's my thought. I can't go for it until we find out what I saw we got there. I mean, we had four years. This should have been already settled. <coughs> found out. So I can't support it until I find out what kind of soil is there. I'm, I think I'm on the side of giving them a go ahead to get Michael Parker locked in for this year, because I think if we don't, then we're, we really are just shooting ourselves in the foot and we've wasted more than one year on this. Um, I'd love to see the, the rec department do some sort of creative fundraising. And I, Shane, I liked your idea of 
you know, if you can get a donation of crushed gravel and you know, we've got the quarry nearby, I think it's about talking to the right people. That I'm sure they have crushed gravel. You know, if we can get that and afford you, you know, a little extra on the car or covering some, you know, incidental. Well, so we did a little special is crushed, uh, crushed ledge. When you pack it, it, it's like concrete, so it's already like a super, super rigid, easily sculpted shape for, for before the floor. Yeah, so I think if you guys can get creative and, you know, both fundraising but also finding some unique donations like that, which takes the legwork and finding the right people, but yeah, I would totally support that. I can give you some names of the people in some gravel pits nearby that can be the most of you will help me on that. I have to agree with Mo. I think that, I mean, I've lived and dug and played in the dirt around here enough to know that if it is clay, a foot of whatever you put down isn't going to be enough. It's not going to stay. Maybe it won't break the first year, but in two years it'll be all crumbled up. Yeah, you want a professional uh, foundation, that's for sure. You're, I mean, you might, have, you might have to go down four four <coughs> feet more. Well, you're going to come back down to town when, uh, when this thing starts to hump up. And I mean, the town isn't I, I would be very concerned to see, yeah. see not one pestle, but what is this, 80 by 100? Um, what was it? 20 by 80. 20 by 80. 20 by 80. 20 by 80. Sorry. But you're going to have, I would say you'd want at least three or four holes, holes. four or five feet deep. Well, I would, I would think that you're going to do some exploratory excavation well, out there before you get, before Parker lands and starts doing any. Well, I can ask the. Any building, and if you do run into uh, an issue with clay, there, then a decision would have to be made at that time. Either you spend a little more to fix it, or you don't, and you yeah. shut the project down. You know, or I you think that you would just say, you know, there's a bunch of clay there. We're just going to dig out a foot, put stone in there, and build on it, because we all know that a year or two later, it's, it's going to be all cracked and humped up. Do you know how long um, we would have before <coughs> walking Michael Parker in? Like, do I have? Month, but three weeks, like, I mean, if I'm going to have to get test holes done. Inside a month. Inside a month. Yeah. Okay, so I can speak to the road crew and what's locking him in mean? Meeting it. Signing the contract. Putting it on his calendar. He's ready to put it on his calendar now. And I'm not sure if that requires a down payment with him or just an agreement to the terms of his proposal. And he wants a signed contract to do it. So. It, Seems like the first payment is the twenty-five thousand upon acceptance of the proposal to initiate yeah. work. So, essentially, he's asking for a twenty-five hundred thousand. Yeah. So, at that time, I need to get three or four holes dug that are four or five feet deep. So, I need to talk to the road foreman tomorrow. Have one more time. What that. experience does the road crew have in doing a foundation for a skate park? No, they're just doing. They're just saying. Just, the the just like board is saying they just oh, want them to dig some holes to see if they get clay. Go out there in the back and dig some holes and see what kind of materials. Yeah, there. I don't know anyone who's done any builds over there. You're not going to do anything now until exactly. So I'm first April. Kind of hopes. Um, so I don't have. Um, the only one I guess we could get a hold of was the McKiernan group who dug the pool who redid all that, I guess we could get a hold of the McKiernan group, right? And ask them what they ran into for soils. That doesn't necessarily mean that's gonna run the whole that's length the there. The pool's at a different level, it's a higher level. Yeah, so I don't, you know, yeah, I, I didn't know that I, about moorings or whatever, because they just barely <coughs> moved the park, so uh, the skate park, so I'm not sure. Well, what, what is Parker assuming is there? I mean, he, he had to assume something. Yeah. Yeah, he's coming. Wait, did he get holes? No. No, he didn't. How about Ray Harvey? Ray Harvey did some work over there. Did he? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Um, I can call Ray. I think so. I think he did the digging on the building there, whatever the foundation was. Yes, he did. I'm just saying, if you're going to spend that kind of money, get a professional foundation yeah. put in, <clears throat> not by the town. No, we're not going to put in the foundation. The only thing we were going to do was excavate the um, 20 by 80 footprint, and, and, and Parker is doing the concrete and all that and shooting the grades. and Dig some holes and have some contractors come. You know, have Jeff Gilman come, have Ray come, have see what they think, you know? Yeah, but you think, but Ray is dug over there, so I could call Ray and see what he ran into for soil. Yeah. You talk nice to those, those guys. They might come over and do it for, to look at it for nothing. Yeah, but I mean, if we so I'm saying have some contractors look at it, if you have it go out to bid, they know what they're, what they're bidding on, you know? 
Well, the, the start with a good foundation. Don't start with it. Right. And you the, know that, Dave. And, <laughs> and, and yeah, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I just want to figure out. So I guess my problem is now I'm not going to get four or five holes dug in the next three weeks before we need to sign him up. So I can call Ray and ask him okay. what he ran into. Well, talk to Mr. Parker and tell him what our concern is and mm -hmm. tell him we'd like to make sure that what we're getting into for soil before we go ahead and see what his viewpoint is on it. Is it really going to mess him up if we dig and find you know, all clay or whatever? Is that, can we still lock him in with the contingent, with the um, addendum that you know we have to figure out what's going on with the soil first. So just make we... it contingent on that. Yeah. We've got and the other thing is, to look into this. Yeah. hasn't Two Rivers? Nobody's asked about. Has Two that Rivers? Should be the first question. Has Two Rivers ever? Um, Nobody asks. When we you know, sometimes they do right? soil mapping and stuff. I wonder about Two Rivers. I can ask. Yeah, they do. They do that with the browns, brown field. Well, I just didn't know. Sometimes when um, what they'll do is they do this segment of your town and can kind of look and see what soils you, you have throughout your town. Yeah, somebody, um, somebody does a thing where uh, I can they, ask. They, they I have a whole stage of agricultural land. I have it. Yeah, uh, yeah, you have the A&R uh, Agency of Natural yeah. Resources might be another venue. Yeah, I can ask. Brown agriculture's got all the soil samples for the whole state. Yeah. That's, so we can look, I can check those in the next, you know, week to see if somebody knows what's over there. But I think calling Ray, thank you, Brian, is a good idea. Because that's what I'm saying. I was looking, I don't know anyone who's dug over there. That's why I asked yeah, Doug. He, he did the utility, I think, the water and the, and the electric and stuff. It's perfect. Yeah. But that's not down in that area of the, of the site, though, is it? Well, yeah, but he dug deep enough across where <coughs> the tennis court was. Uh, so I think he will have a pretty good idea what's over there for soil. Okay, good. He went down fairly deep across there. Okay, yeah. well, I can call Ray. And then as far as the, um, what you're saying, uh, the only part the town was gonna do was a little excavation. Uh, Mr. Parker is a contractor. He's gonna pour all the, the that was all part of his um, price. The 75,000 was for him to pour the foundation base and all the work. Um, and the select board agreed to sole source it to him a while ago because he'd been instrumental in the design and, and all that. So um, that was um, so that was a done deal a while ago. Between that and the performance bond, I think we have two issues that we have. Let's take a look at. If that's what you, yeah, if that's what you guys decide, you just have to make that part of your motion. I would think that, yeah. The performance bond would probably be somewhere around five percent of the the amount. Okay. You know, give or take. <clears throat> hey Chris, is this I haven't seen the picture of the new skate park. Is this gonna be chain link in like the pool is and locked at night? No. 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 So there's no fence, so it's all hours of the day and night this is Park can be used. Yes. Well, no. I mean, there's going to be no, there's, there's signs there that say, you know, what the park is open until whenever, you know, sunset or and, and then that could be enforced by the constable or. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Just like the skating, skating ring. Yeah. <clears throat> I like the idea of adding a contingency to accepting the proposal with what we learned about the play. Um, I don't know who's best to sort of pursue that with Michael. Well, I can, I'll call Ray Harvey and I'll talk to Ray and then I can just let the committee email the committee and let them know what Ray says is over there. Um, but I think that's going to have to be part of the contract anyways is that because he, Michael Parker has a soft, you know, price, if he gets into clay, he's going to stop and be like, okay, what are we doing? Because his price is his price, and he's not going to want to extend over that to deal with it. So um, I will ask Ray how much he's dug over there. And then I can also look and see um, Two Rivers A&R to see if anyone has done any soil sampling over there. And, um, if anyone can think of anyone else who has dug over there besides Ray Harvey, 
tell me, and I can get a hold of them too. Um, I know, because um, I don't know about uh, you know the swing sets and all that. Who's done? You know, I don't know. I've been there a while, but also too maybe Carol Ketchum knows. I could reach out to Carol. You might, right? I can talk to Carol. Because he and I went over there, and he has this special thing that he puts it in the ground, and he put it in the ground. He and I did mm -hmm. um, um, last year. Right. And, uh, and he, uh, you know, went really deep down. Yeah. I'll call him and I can call yeah. him, and, and I'll call him and Ray just to see maybe, you know, Carol's seen something excavated over there, too. That'd be very helpful yeah. to us. So, yeah. 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 Yeah.
look at that and throw it away, but. Uh, I know, that's a thing. So, let's see. So, the. So FEMA, I, um, so we received our money from federal highways, so that's good news, that was about a half mil. So um, we have that money, and um, I've taken a, a um, we taken a draw off from our, our um, line of credit to cover, obviously, so uh, we'll take those back tomorrow, so that'll be good. Um, so federal highways then is wrapped up, so that takes care of camp road. Then I met with, last week, met with um, the river engineer and Chris Bump, the district, whatever his title is, manager, and um, uh, the bridge engineer couldn't make it, but we were working on the RFP for the hydraulic study for Pinello Bridge. So they were very helpful and um, gave me some notes on that. So we're going to, I'll be able to get the hydraulic study out. Bit, so, which was very helpful, and Jaron was great about Pinella Bridge. So, the thing about this is it's crazy because we know what we want to do at Pinella Bridge. We basically like to just replicate what we have there. So, what happens is we have a span of whatever the other bridge was, say it was 60 feet, then we're going to have to get pricing on the 60 foot bridge, the 60, or whatever the next size up is that the hydraulic study says. So that's gonna require abutments and the whole thing. So that's gonna be a price. And as long as, and we can go to the bigger size and have to stay outside of the river like we want to, but first of all, I have to prove to them that it's a cheaper alternative than the other, which we know it's gonna be because we wouldn't have before abutments. And I asked Jaron, one abutment we took out during the installation of the temporary bridge, the permanent bridge, I said, what are we going to do with that abutment? He said we could leave it there, so, which was good news. Um, so, so anyway, so we're, the hydraulic study is now, and then once we get that back, we'll be able to work, do either hire our own engineer or put it out in um, either with a construction, um, like a design build or however we're going to do it. But I tried to convince the state again to sell us the existing bridge that was there, but no can do. They won't do it. So we're still looking for a similar design. But So the hydraulic study will hopefully go out by the end of this week or middle of next um, because they won't, we cannot move forward with the design of the permanent bridge until we have the hydraulic study done. So, it's a pain, but anyways, that's where we are with us. So moving forward, my plan is still is that we will install the permanent Pinello Bridge this summer. And I'm hoping it looks pretty much like it does right now. That's the plan. And, and the state's on board with that. Even um, the gentleman who deals with mitigation for FEMA was on board with that. So we'll see how that goes. So that's where that project is. Then I met with Chris Bump again, and we met with... John from Du Bois and King, who's doing the plan for Peabine. So his first plan was to shut down both lanes of traffic. And I was like, no can do, not with a $2.8 million waterfront. They'll burn me an effigy on the green. We can't get it in Peabine, so that's enough. So we have changed it so that right where you went to Peabine Park, at the end of the park before the slide, we're gonna have the contractors gonna make their entrance there and kind of go along the river. So we went through the design and, and some options with John um, at, at Divorce and King. He's going to make those adjustments, and then that will go out to bid. The problem there is that, um, and I'm going to resolve this hopefully Thursday with FEMA, the FEMA, I don't know how they came up with their design. We answered some questions, very few, and they put a price tag of 163000 on it. Uh, and an engineering cost is more like $353,000. So <clears throat> I've sent all that information to our FEMA rep and asked them to forward it back to whomever came up with the first price to say, okay, and then to go ahead and, and, and um, you know, set the money aside so that we can move forward with the design. So right now, that's where we stand. Um, the good news is it shouldn't disturb any of the pavement right there, maybe, you know, unless it undermines a little bit. Uh, Jaron has given us um, a go so far on the permits for, because um, we have to be in the water a little bit right there, and we'll work on 
that to pull up to put something in, obviously, to create like a dam to divert the water. But so that process is getting ready to go out to bid, but we need to figure out what FEMA's gonna do. And I forwarded all that stuff to Jessica, and I'll see Jessica Thursday, so who's our FEMA rep? Hopefully we'll have an answer from them. And then once we get that resolved, the big price difference, then that will go out to bid, um, and Du Bois and King will be there a couple days a week, and then we'll be looking for somebody like myself or Mo to go over every day, take pictures, that sort of stuff um, during the project. So that um, so if everything works out this summer, we'll do the water project, pea vine, Pinello, and some reclamation at places at the pit. So we'll have a busy summer wrapping some stuff up. So I will have more information in two weeks, but every all the other projects except for what are we doing? The southwest, northwest, Gilead. yeah, whatever that project is. All the other ones have been submitted and they're in for peer review. So um, and we already got our money back on the debris project, which was a small one, but at least that's going through. Um, so at least right now we've you know we've done well in getting all of our projects in. So that looks good. And Jessica's been good to make sure that I have the expenses, make sure match or hers is always a little more because I don't bill out for equipment, they reimburse for equipment. So at least we're finally wrapping that up. Chris and I are gonna to try to figure out, finish up tomorrow some measurements and pictures and and then all the field work will be done. So it's been a process, that is for sure. But the good news is at the end of this, I'm going to have some procedures and some forms and we're gonna so the next time this happens, we will gather some of the information earlier on that you know we didn't realize that we needed later. So we'll do better that way. But so FEMA's you know wrapping up, and but definitely I want the bridge Pine. I don't see any reason that Pinello can't go in, and Pine will definitely happen as long as well. It'll happen as long as FEMA can come up a couple hundred thousand dollars, or they can work out that. So to figure that out, so. Um, I think, you know, it takes it'll be about a year to get through the process from the minute that it happened until we finally get through, it's going to be a year. It's, it's a lot of um, paperwork in the process. It's every single place that you put dirt, they want it. GPS, and you have to measure, and they want photos, and you, it's pretty detailed, so. Does that affect any private property over there or no? So. No key vine? Yeah. Nope. Luckily, it's no. Luckily, what up? Look, we just happened home that strip. We were nice. very yes. I was very happy because we've been working on the easements for all the 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 water project, and so far I haven't had a, one person who may bought, but everybody else has been terrific, and we've got almost all of our permanent easements and temporary easements for the water line project done. So that's been good. Is it going out to bid? Soon, soon, yeah, yeah, I think it's going to go out to bid. It's going out to bid in February, and then it will be awarded in March. I think at some point in March, I'll come to you guys and ask you to basically let me um, rubber stamp whatever the engineer, whoever the engineer picks as the contractor. Um, because of the process of when it's going to come out and when we have meetings, board meetings, or else we'll have to schedule a board meeting just for that. So just because I think it's going to fall between board meetings. So yeah, so that's on that project is all on schedule. Anything else on the FEMA update? Okay. Um, Town manager report. Were you gonna do the special event? Oh I'm sorry, yeah. So we had the special event permit. So it just says um, the license name, American Craft and Spirits, doing business at Silo Distillery, they're out of Windsor. They're holding a trivia night at Babe's Bar. It says Silo will have a three-foot table for display and tasting of Silo Spirits. The event is Thursday, February 20th from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. This is actually a special event permit. So basically, I, I will just tell the town clerk, either you approve it or disapprove it, she signs it, and then she has to send it to them, and it has to be forwarded to them at least five days prior to the date of the event. So. I think they did that once before. Could when be. they first opened up, they gave you silo came in and did a, yeah. Uh, a table. Yeah, they, you yeah. know, that's, I mean, with the, um, 
it's usually people like this. I'm say if you had alcohol allowed at your, if you did this at Forward Fest, sometimes you see a lot of these um, around that time. So. And who signs that? Um, actually, believe it or not, the town clerk, but it's all some circle one, approved or disapproved. It says submit to town, so you have to submit it to Bethel for the location of the special event after action by local control commissioners. That's you guys, you're the local liquor control. This application will be forwarded to the Vermont Liquor Control Board at least five days prior to the date of the event. So you guys just be make a note in the minutes that you approved it or disapproved it. Town clerk signs it and she sends it off to liquor control. Make a motion we approve the special event application. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right, now the town manager's report. All right. So, when I had told you that about the. We got through a lot of it. Okay, already, so, but. yeah, so one of the things we should talk about is Placey's pit. So, I read that. Act 250, um, there's a file about this thing at the town offices, just marked places. And so I read that a couple Saturdays ago. And um, I called Bruno and Associates because it looks like they had done the original mapping of the, of the pit. And I can't seem to locate a copy of the map in the town office. So I don't know where it is. But I'm, so I'm going to ask them, obviously, for an updated one. But the Act 250 permit was very, is clear about how much you can excavate and then reclamation and that you have to take the topsoil off that you're using and it has to be there piled and seeded and mulched, etc. And so we need to solve this mystery because Act 250 permit, the Act 250 permit is going to expire here in another year. So we need to figure out, are we going to go in and do any, all of the reclamation this year? Are we going to do some this year, some next year? Um, so uh, we don't want to violate the permit. And um, so we need to clear that up. The interesting thing about this is the cost of the gravel. It's already expensive. We're paying $5 a yard plus about three fifty dollars a yard to crush it. You can only crush on site for two weeks then it says in the Act 250 permit that you were you can stockpile a little bit at the town garage, but it was really meant to go directly from the pit into a project, the town, into a road right then and there. So, um, you know, so it also had said that you were supposed to put up, I think it was 50, so much, anyways, there was a specific amount you were also supposed to do for places that they could not sell, they were not supposed to sell commercially, but, um, so we didn't do that last year, but I'm not sure they, you know, want anymore, but, um, so there's a few issues um, with that, and we need to figure out where we stand, how much we've excavated, how much have we reclaimed, and, you know, we have a time frame to get there, so we need to figure this out. And that's why I want Bruno and Associates to come down and, and go back through the site, make a site visit with myself and say, okay, here are the parameters, here's what you've done, here's what you should have done, and maybe, and here's what you need to do, and here's how you need to fix it. And then make a determination, is it worth it for us to continue to excavate from this site? Do you want to, you know, ask for an extension on the permit? There's cost associated there. And, you know, is, is it really worth it? So I did look because we had someone who might have been interested in managing the pit for us, but it's pretty clear in the Act 250 language that that is a municipal operation. So um, my concern is that we're going to get in there and we're going to find out that this is a cost and we have to go in and close and we, hopefully all the materials there, because I'm not sure, I certainly know we haven't budgeted to close a pit. So, um, I just need to find out what's happening too there. Yeah. All right. So hopefully um, it'll be good news and we'll figure that out sooner rather than later and we'll deal with it. Um, I met with uh, Gary Slack and Bill Brainerd at the town garage, which was very kind to them. They, I was really looking for the parameters of the old dump so that we could move forward with the town garage. So it was very helpful, he ended up telling me where everything was, the septic system, the leach field, the whole enchilada. So it was great. Uh, I showed Alan today because Alan wasn't sure either. So um, this will help us figure out if we're going to 
change the siting, you still need to do some soil borings because there's still a couple of issues there. But um, it was very helpful and I'm appreciative that they were that they did that. Um, so the Ventrax is VTC was maybe interested and they said they have a lot of cooks in the kitchen up there. So I sent that information a while ago, I haven't heard from them. So I had Kelly post it for sale um, on VLCT's website. Um, and let's see what else we have. Um, trying to do some zoning um, enforcement. So the listers were kind enough to give me a couple of files on things that they found that permits weren't issued for. A gentleman came in and spoke to him and said, oh, I was gonna write you a letter. And he was like, great, took care of it right then and there. I issued another resident a letter to kind of bringing it to his attention, not to the degree of a notice of violation, just kind of like, hey, let's, this is what the issue is, in case you weren't aware, we need to get this taken care of before we move on to that. So, um, so we're trying to wrap up any zoning issues that we're aware of right now to do a little enforcement. Um, so FYI, taxes are normally due on the 15th, but that falls on a Saturday, and we're closed on the 17th for President this day, so taxes will be accepted um, as on time on uh, February 18th, and um, we'll also be issuing water bills that week. So exciting! You can always come in on Friday. That's right. Yeah, and come in. Don't have to wait till Saturday. No, no, you can come in on Friday, but just so you we'll know, take any time I don't want the, anybody to be upset and say, hey, you're closed, we know, but that's the deal. So the taxes, um, and they, people have been coming in and paying now anyway, so it's kind of good. And there'll be a note in the paper also explaining that, that um, we need to the 18th, so. So it'll be the 18th? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we have a mail slot in the door so people can pay them, you know, <laughs> weekend, but just in case. That's the uh, yeah, there you go. That's it. Um, and so I think the other things in your packet were just um, just some information provided to us uh, that I thought might be of interest to you. And, was there a reason for this offering? It's fascinating, but um, yeah. just curious. What that was? It just something that PLCT sent out and you were giving us. Actually, it was something I was reading because we're talking about sovereign immunity, and I was reading, um, just reading about it because we had um, an insurance claim. Um, not when remember when we had the hole in front of the town office. So there had been an insurance claim there, and the people that had made the claim had been denied by an insurance company. And so I was just doing a little follow-up reading and kind of refreshing my memory on the whole. Um, explanation of sovereign immunity. So, example, if someone falls on the sidewalk right. with sovereign immunity, they're not going to be able to sue us. They might right. try to sue the business owner or whoever, you know, but... Well, I also sent you some pictures. I know, I have talked about that. So, um, but anyway, so we, so that was kind of how it came up, yeah, and then Chris had sent me some pictures and we talked about it, so I thought it might be a nice article for the board to read, because it, it is interesting, and I mean, not all-encompassing either, but, but it is a little bit about how it works. So no, not a huge impetus, just yeah. not something we need to be braced for. Impact. No, no, but it's just nice to know. That's what it felt like. Yes. Yeah, no, it was just something that Chris had brought up and I had used the term. I had used the term and we had sovereign immunity and then I thought, well, you know what, that might be something yeah. to have in there for explanation. Just uh, so if you obviously saw that you received some positive comments on the Trump ordinance and you saw the letter I wrote to the Royalton board, etc. So um, that was all in the packet. All right. But no, other than that, just busy, busy. But I'm going well. So it could be a very busy summer. We get all that stuff. I couldn't cool. quite tell if that letter was for or against the ordinance. It was four. It was four. It was four. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think he was, a little, he was a little disappointed that the cars came out of it because of his uh, own issue. But I did delve into that a little bit further with A and R. Mm -hmm. There is a state statute, and and I wrote to the gentleman up there and said, "So here's the situation. Um, we don't have a bylaw saying that we can do this, so they're not necessarily violating our zoning ordinance. They're both they're." <coughs> violating the state law, and so who's going to deal with okay, that? And actually, they were interested in it, and they said, if anything, they would come down and deal with it. And I was like, perfect. So um, I forwarded some images and things to the gentleman. So 
he was the fall. Yeah. Select board meeting minutes for the 27th of January. Anybody have any questions of those? Are we good to approve them as well? Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. good job. Move to approve the minutes as written. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pretty much everything. Uh, the Planning Commission had meeting notes in there. Yep. Town reports have been mailed out to residents. They have, um, but I'm not sure. I have a few people that said they haven't received them yet. But so just so you know, there's three issues out right now that I'm aware of. One is I made a mistake in the warning about Lindley's term, which was two years, not three. And I was looking at a prior town report, and so anyways, that's fine. I let um, the warning you guys end up, you actually signed is correct, and um, we talked to Benson about it. The other one was, is the junk ordinance. So not a big deal. It's going to be a non-binding referendum. So although we know that whatever the voters say, if they want it, you're going to pass it. If they say no, you're not. So it's fine. It just means that the the, the, believe it or not, the residents don't have the authority to pass an ordinance. They have, to pass, they have the right to appeal yours and vote it down. But so basically you'll take what they want you to do in the next meeting, you'll, you'll take care of that. The other thing is we had noticed, Kelly gave me the town report, and I'm looking through it, and I realized that, our, that the articles are numbered, and it's perfect, it was 12, and then we realized that a piece of 13 is missing in the print. But, so, which is fine, we, um, what Kelly is going to do is print out Article 13 and put a couple per page and just, you know, for additional wording, put it on the chairs. And um, so, it's not the end of the world. The warning that has been posted around town is accurate, and that's all we needed, really. So, other than that, um, I think the town report looks really good. Kelly, as usual, does a great job. And um, this year, Petrie was help, really helpful and did some editing for her and, and stuff. So she always manages to find the right pictures and kind of work it out. So that's good. But I noticed the warning that we signed didn't make it into the. No, because and I said that that night. Yeah. It wasn't a, we were trying to make her schedule, which worked out. and um, But it's fine. You have the original as the one that's posted around town for legal of the um, warning. So you're good. All right. But other than that, I think it, you know, came out really well. So, you know, gives everybody the information they want. So that's. I saw that the state uh, had passed one of the resolutions that they passed was allowing the select board to appoint a town agent. Now. Was it? Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. When did they do it? Uh, it was pretty recent. That I saw it. Yeah, this this session. This session. Yeah. So just in. January? Yeah, just in the past. So it uh, probably is weeks, effective. Weeks, I mean, they wouldn't have made it for. They must have made the, it. Uh, the, the bill number and we'll take a look at it. Yeah, so they must make it effective as of like July 1st or something because they yeah. wouldn't have done Depends it. Depends on when they make it. Yeah. yeah. Some will go in uh, January 1st. Yeah, because it doesn't session. make sense that they would have approved it now knowing that people would have been in the minute of doing their warnings. Yeah. And the LCT didn't say anything about it, so I yeah. wonder if it's gone into effect. But not a big deal. I mean, yeah. that takes you two, you know, two minutes at cool. town meeting That's to deal with it. Because we did have Kelly call people who were town agent, et cetera, to see if they were still willing to serve so that um, she could let um, Rick Benson know so it could kind of move ahead a little bit quicker instead of waiting for some buddy to volunteer at the last second. Like I just said, we're missing, there's 12. And then if you get up here, there's a piece of 13 that's missing. Okay. <clears throat> and I don't remember it being like that in the proof, but maybe, I don't know, after a while you looked at it too many times, so. One of those things. And the school is not in here this year. The school is gonna be generating their own. Um, so, I don't know when you'll receive that. That's beyond my review, but, but the, well, that's what they said. And then we went to print, and they wanted to put their stuff in after we went to print. Yes, exactly. We, they did that last wait. year, too, and we waited. But this year, yeah. she was actually printing. Out. They called on a Monday, and Pam was like, I called you. You said no. And it's being printed as we speak. So you're on your own, folks. So next year, we'll have to, we'll try to get it out of them. 
Although they were clear this year that no one who weren't going to, but then they changed their mind. So, so we'll, we'll see. In their, in their defense. Yeah, it's been crazy. The state cause... is terrible about giving out numbers for them to do their budget. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, oh, are you kidding? We were waiting for that tax bill. Racing to get the budget ready for March. Yeah, I think because they won't give any numbers until we were waiting to the last minute to print tax bills this year because I was waiting for the state to give us the education rate. And I'm like, look, I, I didn't want to have to do two, but if it got any later, we would have had to issue one for municipal tax and a second one a few weeks later for the school. And I was like, no, 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 we don't want to do this, yeah. it's going to be a nightmare for people. That's it. So next meeting will be your big budget informational and everything and um, whatever else comes up. Okay. Anything, any other business come before the board? Okay. 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 Okay.